Hello again. Today, let's continue with the stroke panel and learn how to create a simple, basic stroke line. To save time, let's dive right in. When you create lines using the pen or pencil tool or create objects in the designer persona, each new line is created on a new layer as a vector. If you don't create a new layer before drawing, it will keep creating new lines on new layers. The stroke panel consists of basic lines, dashed lines, and brush strokes, along with a close button for when you don't want to use brush strokes. Additionally, it has cap, join, and align options for you to choose according to your needs. For the miter setting, I recommend using around 4 to 6 if you think you might scale the character you are drawing. By clicking scale with object, the stroke will maintain the correct proportions when resized. You can also create dashed lines and arrowheads, but I won't go into detail about those and will focus more on the line drawing itself. The most important part today is pressure. You can add or remove points in the pressure line by moving them up and down. By pressing Alt, you can adjust the start and end points to fit the desired line style. Make sure to save your profile for future use, so you don't have to redo it. The simple principle is to create a line and then apply pressure. When you draw a new line, Affinity Designer will remember the last pressure value you used when you start drawing again. You can also use the Width tool to apply pressure to the stroke. It's easy. Just click on the desired point and drag the handle to increase or decrease it. Double-clicking will reset the handle. That's about it. In Affinity Designer, the Width tool can only be used with the Pen tool and Pencil tool, but it cannot be used with the Brush tool. This is because the brush tool has a fixed stroke width that cannot be adjusted like the pen and pencil tools, which use pressure control to vary the stroke width. But you can set the pencil tool and brush tool to use pressure by selecting their own controller. Okay, that's a brief overview of the stroke panel for now. Do you remember how to use the pen tool? Let's do a quick review. Click to start, click again to create a straight line, and click and drag to create curves. And if you click the same point again, it switches to smart mode. Double click to stop drawing. Select the last point and continue drawing. When you use any tool in Affinity Designer, the context toolbar will display options for you, and keyboard shortcuts will appear below. 
When I draw, I try to snap the first and last nodes to the line as much as possible. You'll know it snaps when the line turns yellow. If you snap point as described, you can use the Vector Flood Fill tool to color without needing to expand the stroke. This is useful when you want to change the stroke style to something different. You can do this by selecting the desired stroke and applying a brush style from the brush panel. You might feel that there are a lot of limitations when working in vector mode, but don't worry. There are ways to fix things. For example, you can expand all stroke lines before coloring. Just draw naturally, expand the strokes, and then fill them with color. The more you practice, the easier it becomes to fix these things. Don't worry too much, I'll keep adding tips and techniques in future videos. Some people say that uniform lines can look boring. Let's play around with stroke design by applying pressure to the lines. My simple rule of thumb is that lines facing the light should be thinner, while lines in the shadows should be thicker. You'll need to study this and apply it to your own style. I can't tell you exactly how your lines should look, that's something you'll need to develop yourself. Even after applying pressure, you can still adjust the points whenever you like. This method might take a bit of time, so I suggest setting the pressure first, then draw all the lines. Once you're done, you can go back and adjust any lines you don't like, it'll be easier that way. I'm not saying you have to follow my method exactly. You might find a better or simpler way that works for you. I'm just offering this as another option. Now, let's talk about erasing. Since we've added pressure to the strokes, you can't just erase them directly, doing so would ruin the shape. Instead, expand the strokes first, and then use the Shape Builder tool to erase parts. If you want to apply a brush style, make sure to duplicate your ink layer. Keep in mind that the brush style won't recognize the pressure you've applied, so it's best suited for characters with uniform line widths. Once you've finished expanding all the stroke lines, you could combine the lines into one shape or leave them separate, it's up to you. I won't be merging everything into one piece. The reason is that sometimes we forget to erase some of the ink lines, and this way, it's easier to fix them. You can just fill over the areas you want and easily adjust any gaps in the ink shapes. When coloring, use the Vector Flood Fill tool to keep everything vector-based. If you forget to remove any expanded ink shapes, set the Vector Flood Fill tool to Knockout Mode. This will automatically erase the ink as you color. It's located at the top in the Context Toolbar. Set the Fill Mode to Knockout for the Vector Flood Fill tool. After coloring, don't forget to merge areas of the same color into one piece. Go to the Select menu, choose Select Same Fill Color, and click Add to merge them into a single piece. Check out the Vector Flood Fill tool on Affinity's channel, it offers great tips on how to use it. I might have forgotten to mention that earlier, but this should be enough to give you a clear understanding of how it works, even if it's your first time using it. This method is what I often use for designing mascots, mascot logos, and cartoon characters for branding. It ensures that the lines stay sharp and high quality, even when resized or exported. That's it for today. There are just a few more parts to finish this beginner's guide to Affinity Designer in my style. Make sure to follow and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.